Hello everyone and welcome to today's episode of the Osasu Show. Before I go into the topic of discussion for today's episode, I want you to pull out your phone and go to www.tostvnetwork.com forward slash TPC and nominate who you want to be president in 2019. I'm sure you know the People's Candidate is an initiative of the Osasu Show and Connected Development. It's an initiative and a platform where everyday Nigerians, irrespective of political affiliation and social status, can nominate a man or woman of integrity that they want to see lead this country in the 2019 general elections. So stop what you're doing right now and go to tostvnetwork.com forward slash TPC or you can text in or WhatsApp in your nominee to the number or details on the screen. On today's episode of the Osasu Show, we bring you a documentary by NapTip, which shows the surge of human trafficking in Nigeria. This documentary will open your eyes to the plight of this heinous crime and ways individuals like you and I can combat it. So don't go anywhere and we'll be right back on the Osasu Show. Okadonli, the Director General of the National Agency for the Prohibition of Trafficking in Persons, NAPTIP. Well, the objectives of NAPTIP are mainly to prevent human trafficking from occurring and to protect victims of human trafficking as well by um, caring for them, supporting them and prosecuting the offenders as well. To be honest, um, NAPTIP was not doing badly before I joined um, in the sense that they already had been able to get about 330 convictions at the time I joined. And um, there were lots of cases being prosecuted, arrests being made. You know, yeah, I think they were, they were, they were up to speed before I joined um, NAPTIP. And then I came, I joined them. Um, we had a strategic meeting uh, on how to get things done. Um, in a better way and in a speedier way as well. So, I mean, and we've been doing that ever since.
also the um, whistleblowing policy was also um, approved and that has enabled us to get a lot of information these days. We have so many people calling, calls, text messages, you know, WhatsApp and um, that's a very good thing because we need intelligence, we need information to work. We've um, convicted a lot, we've rescued a lot, and that gives me joy. So I think, yes, um, a lot of things have happened and is happening. And um, basically, we embarked on a massive awareness campaign because my strategy is um, prevention. Prevention is always better than cure. And so massive awareness campaigns in various communities, not just endemic communities, but every single community, everybody involved, all of society, all of governments, faith-based organizations, CSOs, the NGOs, schools, the community leaders, everyone is involved in this awareness campaign. And I think it is really, really helping because people are becoming more aware and more knowledgeable. We also um, interact with even parents of um, you know, potential victims of trafficking in the various communities as well. And I think this has really, really helped to spread the message. At this point in time, I would like to also um, let the world know that we are just awaiting the final approval from the National um, um, Education Commission um, to infuse trafficking in persons in the primary and secondary school curricula. And if this happens, then of course our youths will be well educated from primary and secondary schools. And I think this will go a long way in um, preventing human trafficking. It's really unfortunate, you know, like I said, ignorance um, constitutes a major factor of what has been going on, you know, recently. Um, most of those that are stuck in Libya were actually trying to cross the Mediterranean to some various parts of Europe. Um, unfortunately, they got stranded there. I mean, these are people that come from the rural areas and are deceived that um, there are jobs waiting for them in Europe. And so, funny enough, most of them even pay so much money for this trip. So, I mean, it's not so much of a factor of poverty, you know, but just sheer ignorance. Unfortunately, because they come from the rural communities, they have little or no access to the internet. And so, those pictures that we see on the internet that we have access to, they do not have access to those, you know, pictures. And that is why we've decided to take this awareness to those rural communities to show them the graphics, show them, let them know what is really going on. We have shelters where we are expected to take the returnees to or the victims. We take them to the shelters where everything is provided for them from food, from um, clothing, medicals, psychosocial support is given to them, and then of course empowerment. They are now empowered before reintegrated back into the society. It's not something that we just give um, rice, because when you talk of relief material, somebody just thinks of, oh, when they return, you just give them some bags of rice, some cartons of water, and it ends there. So, I mean, it's more than relief we give to them. We give them total care and support all in the shelters of NAPTIP. And I'm proud to tell you that NAPTIP has single-handedly sponsored some of these victims or survivors, and they are now graduates of universities. Right now, we have three in the university. We also have in the secondary schools and the primary schools for those who are interested in formal education. I would like to see Nigeria in the next four years go back to tier one. Nigeria used to be in tier one position, unfortunately, they are now in the tier two watch list. But I know with the vision of Mr. President, Nigeria will go back to tier one in the next four years because the president is on the right track. Nigeria is on the right track. NAPTIP is on the right track. The international community can see the efforts of NAPTIP, what we are doing and how we are trying to prevent human trafficking. We have a lot of international um, development partners. We collaborate with the UK government, Germany, um, Italy, Spain, um, America, um, 
Sweden, Norway. In fact, we, we collaborate with nearly all the various countries. If you look well, a lot of people are wondering, oh, do you guys ever get convictions? I can assure you, we get convictions, we convict, we arrest, we prosecute. But unfortunately, most of these papers just look for a very little column somewhere at the back of the paper because they don't think it's a good news item, unfortunately. People still do not take human trafficking seriously in Nigeria. They do not understand the implication, they do not understand the consequences of human trafficking. Human trafficking has become big business, not just internationally, but also locally. There's a lot of lo um, um, internal human trafficking going on here apart from the international trafficking. Internationally, it is claimed that it's about $150 billion a year, and I believe it is more. It is claimed that it's the third largest after arms um, smuggling and uh, um, money laundering, but I believe it's the first. And so, I mean, it has taken a horrible dimension because now we also have elements of um, organ harvesting, where organs are, are, are sold in the open um, black market, where people are killed for their organs and sold. So this is another dimension, you know. I, the, 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 the traffickers here in Nigeria and abroad are really, really people without a conscience who just care about the money that they will make because there's so much money. We have people who call themselves agents, for example, go to the rural areas, they take away these vulnerable children from their parents after giving them false hopes of good jobs and sending them to schools. They distribute them in homes. And I keep telling people, do not encourage that. If any agent gives you a house help and tells you to pay him the salary at the end of the month, he is a trafficker, please report to NAPTIP. Because what that means is that they've brought people from various communities and they've, 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 they've recruited, they've sent them around to different homes. And at the end of the month, they smile to the bank. That is human trafficking. For those who are taken out again, it's not a free ride. You pay so much money to embark on these treacherous, dangerous journeys. So anyone who tells you, pay for this journey, I'm taking you abroad, is a trafficker. He's evil. You may not even live to tell the story. You may die on the way. Even if you don't die on the way, you may be a victim of human organ harvesting, where your organs are taken and sold for money. So it's, it's, it's a horrible crime, and trust me, this crime involves the high and the mighty. The high and the mighty are involved in this crime. And our desire is to fish them out, because those are the main culprits in all of this. We're not just content, you know, prosecuting um, the small fishes who are like agents to these high and mighty. We are looking for the kingpins of the trafficking ring. And by the grace of God, we will bring them down. To Nigerians, we need to imbibe the culture of talking. Know your surroundings. Look around very well and know what is going on. Identify when something is not going wrong or does not look right. You need to begin to make reports, phone calls. If you see something that looks not right, please call NAPTIP. NAPTIP is always there to respond. I also want to advise families, do not be in a hurry to let your children travel out for so-called greener pastures. There's no place like home. Encourage them to stay. If anyone I mean, offers to assist, they, they don't need to take your children out of the country to assist them. They can assist them in Nigeria. When someone comes to tell you they, need, they, they can only assist your children if they are out of your home, then that should raise a, a red flag and you should call NAPTIP to confirm. So I'd like to advise Nigerians generally, be your brother's keeper. If you see something, say something. Human trafficking, popularly known as modern day slavery, is very much with us, even in this 21st century. It is a crime against God and humanity. You may be thinking, this message is not for me. Think again, because if you are paying your employee through an agent, you are a trafficker. If you employ a child under 12 years as a domestic worker, you are a trafficker. 
If you abduct a person against their will, keep and exploit them. For monetary gains, you are a trafficker. If you promise international jobs with the intention to exploit the victim sexually and for cheap labor, you are a trafficker. If you buy and sell human organs, you are a trafficker. There are so many components of trafficking with devastating effects on the victims. This victim may be your daughter, son, brother, sister, mother or father. Let us be our brother's keeper. Join hands with NAPTI to stop human trafficking now. Report cases of human trafficking to these NAPTI hotlines. 0703-00-00203-080-02-255-627847. NAPTIP, empowered to protect you. There is a reason Africa is called the new frontier. What was once potential is now an opportunity ready to be seized. Once revered for our resources, Today's wealth lies in our people. People who build the cities that shape the future. People who know an idea in one place means business in another. A generation for whom technology means there are no borders, no boundaries. We are the new lions in a brave new world. Kings of the urban jungle. And there's a bank that puts the world in our pocket and the future in our hands. UBA, Africa's global bank. Welcome back to the Osasu Show. As usual, we went to the streets to ask everyday Nigerians their thoughts, their candidates, their preference and why for 2019 presidential elections. Take a look. Well, my previous candidate is... At Atiku Abubakar, down to Raki of Adamawa. Why I prefer him to be the candidate 2019 is that Atiku has been, he has been there, you understand? He's a man that uh, I personally so much believe in, and I believe that he will do well if he comes 2019. Well, for me, I'll advise the, our president look towards being sitting as other statesmen in this country a be and a like a royal father a royal father that will be passing our instruction his age is no longer on his side actually we need a vibrant young man that can pilot this nation to the right to the next level now buhari go freda shugabankasa buhari na only buhari buhari don buhari ya kori boko haram Ya kori cin hanci ya kori barayi barayi duk sun tafi sun watse Nigeria yanzu abin da ya rike kawo ringa kawo mana su daya daya ana kila kawai abin da ya rike mana kenan amma Buhari ya yi wait wait supporting gaba da Nigeria Buhari sai Buhari duka Buhari Buhari kawai jiga wasu te Buhari kawai I prefer to go because I believe he's not coming out to eat any money he's coming out to help Nigerians I think if we can allow this our current president, uh, Mr. Muhammad Buhari, so I think everything is going to be okay. To me, I'm going to fit Mr. Buhari, our president. This current president, I'm going to fit him. Although we are facing hardship right now, but according to our our proverb, our popular habit, the sufficient does eat fattest bone. Understand? I think President Buhari has been doing well and he has been trying to make a change to this country. But as a nation, we have to, to exercise patience. Mm, my brother, if I, as I make a check on, as I sit down, reason now, where we understand? Me, oh, for me, see this Buhari bar. Me, I, I say, I know, I know, like, I know, well, let me Buhari come back again. You understand? Like, to me, if they feel like carry like good luck, Jonathan feel come back or Atiku, they are strong. But for me, maybe why you come back again? I don't like him. They are strong because you know they easy. What in my eye don't see since reach this one and eighteen now. They are strong. For me, as I want good luck, make it come. Jonathan, make it come back. Why I say make good luck come back? Because in time of good luck, they are strong. The economic, they are strong. The economic say 
At least this not too money not too scarce. I want Buari to come for 2019. Because he's a good man, he fights corruption, he stopped Boko Haram. There's no more Boko Haram again in Nigeria. Presently, I can't say I have anybody I'm giving my moral support. But I can say I have a party I'm giving my moral support. That has to be with the PDP precisely. Why I'm saying so? Because during the PDP administration, there was um, job creation. We have less numbers of um, um, non-employed youth on the streets. But this administration, I'm not being biased, but I just have to be sincere that this administration has failed this nation. They promise creating 3,000 jobs in a year. But to be very sincere, we have lost more than 4 10 million jobs in less than three years. And we have too many numbers of unemployed youth in the streets of Nigeria as I'm talking to you now. And we are facing lots of crime. Initially, during the PDP administration, we have youth that has their own businesses. But now, lots of business has been closed down. Some, some entrepreneurs have gone back to their house because there's no patronage and they are feeding from what they have been saving. As such, it has bring about the closing down of their businesses. If I, might, I, if, I, if I might tell you exactly the person I want to vote, that's the person I, I have in mind now, the governor of uh, Ekiti State. Um, yeah, yeah, the man is straightforward. He's a straight, straightforward man. Um, he, uh, he, 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 he can decide what to do. In fact, he had a focus for Nigeria. Uh, he, he has the, 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 the credibility to handle Nigeria very well. And, and that's why I, I, I'm deciding to, to see if I, it's the person that I can vote for. I want Meki Buhari 2019 because I like Buhari very well. 2019, I never know the, the right person. Right? But I they pray to my God, may I bring out a person who will help Nigeria, a person who will benefit, a person who will help us, everybody will enjoy. That is why I say I still pray. May God show me the right person. Hey, I want to worry to be a president in 2019. My reason is that no one in the Nigeria we are looking now to bring the end of the corruption. And the other criminalism in Nigeria, the same to Mahmoud Buhari. But we have the thing that we are going to advise Mr. Buhari because of many mistakes there is in his leading now, currently, because of some people that are behind him and he accepted them as they are a good people. I would like to say that I support people's candidates. I support people candidates. I support the people candidates. I support people's candidates. I support the people's candidates. I support the people's candidates. I support people candidates. I support the people candidates. I support the people's candidates. I have a voter's card. A voter card. That's it for today's episode of the Osasu Show. To watch extended clips, you can visit our site www.tostvnetwork.com. Don't forget to nominate your candidate to tostvnetwork.com forward slash TPC. Or you can send us a one minute short clip, your name, your state of residence, and who you want to be president in 2019. You can WhatsApp that in or tag us on social media at the Osasu Show, at TOSTV Network, at Osasu Ignatian, and at Hansi Code on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. I'll see you same time, same place next week. And until then, take very good care of yourself. God bless you.